So here we have a couple of situations where there's snow on the side of the house and we have a window. Um, these ones don't. This neighborhood doesn't have window wells. Newer construction, there's, there'll be a metal window well that goes around these as well. So those are areas you want to keep free of snow. Um, you want to try and get the snow away from the window wells, otherwise the water tends to pond in there, especially when the window is actually partially below grade. The water will sit against the window seals and try and work its way through and that can cause damage to your basements. So it's a good area to keep it away. And also as a general rule, the snow along the sides of your houses, um, if your property is graded uh, inappropriately and so the water actually flows towards the foundation, you probably want to leave the snow there and, and uh, allow the ground away from the house to melt so that it wicks the moisture away. But if, you're, uh, if your property is properly graded, um, you can move that snow away from your foundation four to six feet uh, if you're able. And that just allows that water as it melts, it takes it away to the street. So next we'll have a look at uh, where the water goes once it's leaving your property. So one of the things that uh, the properties, uh, will, uh, issues that it will have is uh, the front yard, the backyard, and also your side yards is, is which way does the water flow and how do you effectively get it from your property out into the system where uh, the city's sewer, storm sewer system can take the water away. So here we have a property that has good grading. It all slopes towards the street. Um, so what they've done here is obviously get their path clear which is excellent, but uh, the snow around the house, if they want to move that away, or at the very least, make sure that there are channels for the water as it's melting that it can get through. So sometimes, uh, sometimes that just means providing little drainage channels that are a shovel width wide, just to let that moisture get out. Otherwise, it tends to sit and soak into the moisture and, and sit on the ground and, and not be able to flow freely. Um, there are some spots on the street where the water will flow underneath the ice and the snow, but for the most part, water won't actually uh, flow through underneath the pile like this. It's not going to be able to get through that. There's too much cold and frost down there. So you want to be able to provide those channels. So a sidewalk, um, and if you don't have a sidewalk, then just simply carving out a little path to let that water get out is, a, is an excellent strategy. Now once the water is leaving your property, where it's going to go, the city is set up with a series of catch basins and, and uh, culverts and things like that that move this water away. So what we're asking residents to do is to keep an eye on your street. Um, you can go on Google Street View to look at your street to figure out where the catch basins are, or you can call the city at 777-7000 and they'll work with you to help you locate your nearest catch basin. Is to make sure that those are clear. Now city crews have been going around clearing those off, but with all the wind and the snow that we've been having, some of those lo locations are covered again. The other concern that we have is when all the snow melts, all of the debris and garbage that's collected in it over a year starts melting and flowing with it, and all of the leaves and stuff from the fall will flow along and they'll plug those grates. So if you have one in front of your house, just make it a habit during the next month or so to keep an eye on that. And if you notice getting cluttered up, or you see some ponding developing there, just go out with a rake and try and scrape the top off. That allows the system to do its job and it keeps your, your home and your neighbor's home safe. Um, if you're not able to get it flowing again, then please call the city again at uh, 777 7000 and we'll send out a service truck. There's a possibility things may be frozen or uh, it could be a, a bigger blockage than a, than a rake can manage. Mm -hmm. So when you have an instance like you know some of these where there's a few feet worth of snow and, and likely ice, packed up on top of one of those catch basins is it you know do you suggest people wait until it melts some and then try to get at it or uh, yeah uh, again uh, in many parts of the city the the city crews have already gone around and scraped it right down to the top of the grate so some of them are exposed in a situation like this where you have this much snow um, some people will go to the effort of actually digging those holes out if it's going to be two feet deep then that's a, a bit of a tripping hazard and I would say wait until things start to melt and move a little bit before you do that otherwise we wind up with a a hole in the ground that can be dangerous for people. Okay, uh, another critical area within uh, your home or actually outside of your home that you can uh, have a look at is your eaves trough system. So that's the system of troughs and trays and tubes that take the water from the roof uh, and move it away from your home. Um, so here on this yellow house we can see uh, they've got a nice eaves trough system and down it comes down and it actually moves the water away from the foundation. Often what you'll have is it, it just a little uh, 90 degree elbow at the bottom and one of those little blocks that pushes the water about a foot or two away from the foundation. In a situation like this with the snow, all that does is cause that water to back up and sit right there against the foundation wall. So just like everything else we're doing, we want to try and take that moisture away from the foundation wherever possible. So here they've got a nice long run. The rule of thumb, uh, or what we recommend people do, is, is about two meters, so about six feet, uh, is to try and make sure you've got at least six feet of run there and get that right away from your home. 
Um, and what that does is it protects you from the melting snow on the roof, but it also protects you if we do wind up with any uh, a thunderstorm or a rain shower or something here as we move into spring. It helps keep that moisture away until the ground has had a chance to build its capacity up again, so it's dried out a little bit and has room to absorb those events. The other thing you want to keep an eye on too is uh, over the winter if we get the sort of thaw uh, freeze cycle going and it creates a lot of ice damming and ice uh, buildup within those uh, uh, eaves troughs. So it might be worth getting up there or having somebody go up there for you and clear those out again just to make sure that that water can flow through smoothly. Otherwise it tends to uh, go over the ice as it's melting, drip off the side of the building and still wind up along the ground next to your foundation. So the name of the game is really about keeping uh, the water away from the foundation and getting it away as quickly as possible.